Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and they just put up a blog about the buildings for Total War Warhammer. So this is, uh, they say it's Eva Javzi here who's sharing some of the details. So let's go ahead and dive into it. One of the main statements that they say at the forefront is they kind of wanted to break away from the negative side effects of the building system. They didn't quite elaborate what they meant by that, but my takeaway was they wanted to kind of get away from the balancing act that you have with buildings, which was uh, seen pretty prominently in Attila, which is where you have a lot of one building and it creates creates squalor and it's just you know you're kind of disincentivized from building structures I think they want to get away from that and what they're doing is you know kind of admitting that Total War Warhammer is about warfare and so um, you're not going to be directly penalized for having specifically buildings I think but mostly if you want to have a good war and good troops then you definitely have to build the correct structures right there in order to feed into your war effort uh, and they then say here there are five levels of buildings available for construction. So the core of each settlement is going to be the main settlement building, which represents the population and basic infrastructure. You can see here in the background when you select a province, there's going to be a capital city. Uh, so you have to kind of progress along this main settlement. And then you have these sort of ancillary buildings that you can then construct and upgrade. Um, as you upgrade the main kind of civic center of your structure, it unlocks additional slots for your buildings and, and whatnot. So Obviously, you need to push forward the central tech tree to unlock more and more of these ancillary traits right through here. That's uh, relatively interesting. Here is something that's a little bit more interesting is the settlements, how they're being uh, rather distinct with what is going to be your settlement, uh, you know, your province capital. You only have one of these. Uh, it's going to have tall walls and towers, whereas the other, you know, regions within any province are going to be less highly upgraded. Uh, these are going to be these kind of outskirts, these minor settlements, which are much more vulnerable to attack than the province capital, which has most of your high-end stuff, and that can have up to, uh, you know, level 5 stuff. Then they also talk about some of the buildings, and particularly calling out that you're going to have unique buildings. So they say Middenheim is famous for its great temple of Uruk, and Nuln for its gunnery school. Mount Gunbad is sitting on the only known deposit of Brightstone. So this is super, super interesting and very important. I think that they really need to bring the lore to the forefront with these unique buildings, and I hope that the unique buildings are not just unique in terms of buffs, but I hope that they really do bring out special units. So the gunnery school, I hope it doesn't just allow you to churn out stat-wise better units, but I hope it's tied to an actual unique gunnery unit. And if they do that, then that is very, very important to me, and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. The next part that they discuss here is, you know, okay, we've talked about the cities, but what is a threat to your city? Well, they say there's going to be some of these threats. So, for instance, roving savage orc warbands that can go around and attack you. Then Norska, which is going to be part of the, you know, the Norse-inspired <laughs> um, tribes from the north, will go around with these fleets of raiders and might attack you. So along your coastal settlements, I think that's a, a nice little twist. And they say every time you fail to defend a settlement, it will be seriously damaged. You might lose your city entirely if it's demolished, or you might just drop a little bit in terms of your building level. And it says your foes may even leave some things behind you'd rather not have. I'm not quite sure what that means. It might mean that if they take over a settlement and then leave, there's a new building that's within your settlement that they put there in the first place. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. And then at the end there, they make allusion to the fact that you can actually raise completely uh, settlements from the campaign map and that they need to be then repopulated with colonies as was the case with the till I was able to ask the developers back when I met with them and that's what they uh, they confirm the next threat is going to be this encroaching corruption level which is something here if you look in the background it's going to be this kind of pleasant area in the empire and it's unmolested very much quiet outside of the war torn area but what happens if there's vampire counts or the chaos that can have influence in certain areas and that's done passively through the use of buildings or influence and then actively through the use of agents and so you can see here this is that same area but completely transformed by chaos the character there in the forefront is a chaos general uh, people are saying it's Archon uh, which is very very cool to see him in the flesh not as imposing as I would have thought he was before perhaps he's low level um, but look at the transformation that took place in the background not only is the ground scorched and burnt, but there's now these giant kind of spikes coming out of the back where that settlement was previously. There's almost like this warp gate uh, up through the center, so that's uh, super, super interesting, I thought, right through there. Uh, and then they say that chaos has an influence um, which can corrupt the population, and so as chaos spreads, yes, it has this visible element on the sorry, on the campaign map, but then also it'll start to cause uprising amongst your citizens, 
And um, when the, I spoke to the devs about this, they said it would actually result in Chaos Armies spawning within territory. So I really like that encroaching feature, kind of taking the Attila um, mechanism of you know raising provinces and settlements, taking that to the next level and having it actually spawn these uh, these these armies of chaos, which is very thematic, uh, and I think with the living campaign map that you see in the background and how dynamic it's going to be, I think that does bring a lot to the campaign map. I really want to know what that warp gate thing is over that settlement. It could just be a quest that Archon had to do, like to maybe um, go destroy the city, and maybe he did that. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But anyways, that's about it for the blog. I found it to be very interesting. I think. Um, it does pose, once again, the promise of a lot of depth and uh, replayability to Total War. Um, but then again, as we've seen, you know, they, they're putting great strides in certain areas, but then you take a look at the uh, Empire Army roster, which is super lackluster, so it's kind of weird to see that contrast. Um, what I'm hoping to see done is with these unique buildings that you can get, for instance, for the Empire, I'm hoping that having unique buildings will actually unlock unique um, units, and that in turn those unique units will then further flesh out the Empire roster unlike we haven't seen before. So for example, in the Empire roster they didn't really talk about the Knightly Orders. The Idealist um, is uh, inside of me saying, well perhaps those Knightly Orders have to be unlocked by building certain structures that then unlock that, uh, you know, the, the building chain to have that guild or that, uh, you know, that um, discipline within your force and allow it to then procure these knights. I think that would be a cool way to um, force you to specify certain cities and structures around producing particular military units, not in the generic sense, but in the very, you know, almost like producing Templars would have been in the past. So I hope that, I really, really hope, that's the optimist in me, uh, I should have said that certainly, that's the optimist in me, <laughs> hoping that that's going to be the case. Anyways, we're going to have to stay tuned to hear more. Hope you guys enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.